if you're like me, you've started playing Black Ops 2 or Halo 4 and you want to get that coveted open NAT and I want to show you how to do that. Now, um, you can get all of the instructions that I am going to give to you today off of trialsandtribstech.blogspot.com. That's my blog. I wrote this article and I wanted to produce a video for those of you who uh, like the video format a little better. So the first thing I'm recommending is plugging your Xbox 360 in using Ethernet. And my reasoning behind this is that, you know, there's a lot of variables that can affect your wireless signal, including interference, construction, signal loss. Uh, when I'm talking about construction, you know, if you're, you, you live in a home that's bigger or you have metal studs in the wall, uh, things like that can cause signal loss. Uh, and can really affect the speed at which your wireless service connects. If you do have to connect with wireless, I really recommend wireless in. Now, most Xboxes, if, if not all of them, uh, at least the slim version that I have, do not connect uh, on the 5 gigahertz uh, band. So, um, you know, basic wireless in on the 2.4 gigahertz band is what you'll need. Uh, the reason I would recommend wireless in above other types is because not only because it offers faster speeds but it offers less latency and that's the big thing that you know affects when you get on a one in on a one on one match with somebody you want low latency so that you can win that match um, you know also when you're setting up wireless in or any wireless for that matter you want to make sure that uh, you are securing it with WPA, WEP is just not enough, and uh, try to get one of the non-overlapping channels, uh, channel 1, 6, or 11, whichever is least congested, uh, to get the best performance. Also, uh, I'm starting off with the basic stuff first and moving forward from there, but uh, the next step that I would recommend is making sure UPNP is on. And this will just make sure that you have a more direct connection to the Xbox Live servers. Uh, and um, on my particular modem, it's an Action Tech C1000A by CenturyLink. And it's pretty simple. It's going to differ, you know, depending on what service provider you have, uh, who manufactures your router. Um, but uh, in my situation, uh, you can just come into UPN in, the, in advanced settings, UPNP, and turn on or enable both UPNP and UPNP NAT-T, and then click Apply. Next, I recommend setting up port forwarding. Now, with port forwarding, one really easy tool to use is the portforward.com website. And on here, you can choose your router and I'll choose my old one, my new one's not in here. Choose your router. Uh, you, as you can see in here, it gives you a list of applications, as they would call them, that you could set up for port forwarding. And what we're going to select is Xbox Live. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Alphabetical order, right? Okay, well, live isn't in here. Of course, I looked up the port numbers on a different site when I did this, uh, but you can also select the game that you want. So, let's see, we'll just click on this one here. As you can see, when you get in here, it has specific instructions for what you need to do to set up port forwarding for your modem, for the exact ports that you need. This 3074 is one of the ports that you would use to uh, set up port forwarding for Xbox 360 on uh, Xbox Live. Get 
back to my site here. The next thing I recommend doing is checking your quality of service settings. Uh, QoS is uh, a bunch of preset options that are in your modem that determines what priority uh, different traffic is given on your router. Uh, in my situation, I took out the quality of service because the only settings were for that from CenturyLink were VOIP and, and for video services and I didn't want to give either of those priority because you know I, I want uh, to get the best performance on my Xbox when my wife is streaming and I'm playing don't tell her I said that <laughs> next uh, change your DNS servers uh, a lot of the ISPs they don't have really great DNS servers you know they you know just don't seem to be the most up-to-date or you know they don't seem to be the quickest and so what you can do is you can come in and you can put in your own DNS servers that you choose I recommend either the Google servers or the open DNS ones and you know the reason I recommend those is because um, you know they're quicker and in my experience I put a, one Google in and one open DNS in and the idea there is that if one, if one company's servers goes down I still have the other companies as backup this is the open DNS one the Google one's really easy to remember it's 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. You can also enter these in your Xbox. Okay, and I think this is a big one, turning off the IPv6. Uh, not so much the 6RD that many um, providers are offering, Verizon, Comcast, CenturyLink are all offering 6RD. I'm talking more about not on the, the WAN side, but on the local area network side. Uh, if you have IPv6 turned on on the local area network side um, sometimes what happens depending on your router is your router might try to encapsulate the IPv4 from your Xbox Xbox is not compatible with IPv6 and you know if your packets get encapsulated uh, into another packet you're trying to square things with the IPv6 of your router, uh, it can slow things down and it can really contribute to some lag and some latency. Um, you might not even detect these slowdowns, you know, through uh, one of the speed test sites like speedtest.net, and uh, that's why you want to make sure that uh, on the LAN side, IPv6 is enabled isn't enabled. If it is enabled on the WAN side, it's usually not a big deal because most companies have a dual stack. They'll run IPv4, IPv6 at the same time, and your Xbox traffic will be passed through as IPv4. So next we have securing your network better. Uh, at the very least, if you have wireless, you want to uh, turn, turn on WPA encryption. Uh, it's so easy for somebody to get on your connection and start downloading torrents and destroy your speeds, uh, destroy your bandwidth. Um, and then on top of that, um, if you use enough bandwidth and you have a carrier who either throttles or does bandwidth capping, you know that just adds fuel to the fire. You, you can really end up with a slow connection if you don't secure your network. Not to mention, you're putting your personal information out there if you don't. Next, update your router firmware. I have personal experience with this and I think it's very important to update your router's firmware. Uh, you know, a lot of these companies, especially on their cheaper line of equipment, they don't spend as much time testing the firmware and sometimes things get pushed out the door and they don't work as well as they should. I definitely recommend updating your router firmware especially if you're on CenturyLink like me. Next is clear your Xbox's cache. So you've gone through all these steps and you've optimized your internet connection. 
the next thing you want to do is to clear your Xbox's cache and I've included a link on my web page for doing that. It shows you exactly the instructions you need to be able to do that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to show you guys uh, how to update your firmware if you have a modem like I do. So I'm going to my modem login page and you can do that by typing in 192.168.0.1 on most units into your web browser and I already logged in usually it'll ask you for a login uh, though if you haven't and um, in my situation let me see I believe it's under utilities it's upgrade firmware some units uh, you'll have to go and download the firmware and, and manually update. In this unit I can download um, from, the, from the modem itself. I don't have to go to the manufacturer's website and I can choose the file and upgrade from in here. Some of them it's really simple. If you can't figure it out, contact your ISP or contact the manufacturer. Uh, and that's my very next thing is contact your ISP. Sometimes if you're having performance problems, uh, they can help you get to the root of the problem. There might be a bad, bad line uh, that's contributing to poor connection speeds or to latency. Uh, they might have some tweaks that they, they can do on their end to help you out. Uh, most providers won't do this, but I have heard if you search around Google, if you're having problems with your provider, some providers will make different tweaks uh, for you on their end on request. Uh, sometimes your router just might not be very compatible with Xbox Live. I've ran into that with CenturyLink as well. Um, and that's why I've, uh, you know, I bought a better uh, router f until I switched to a higher speed and I had to buy another one. Um, and sometimes, you know, it might just be better for you to get a, you know, a different type of connection. Um, you know, usually this isn't going to apply unless you have um, ISDN or dial-up or some older type of connection. You can also buy a better modem or router. A lot of people don't know that even if the cable company or the telephone company specifically states that you have to buy a modem from them or you have to rent a modem from them, a lot of people don't know that you can actually get on Amazon and get a different a different and a better uh, unit. Um, Linksys is a good one. Uh, they they are actually bought out by Cisco and they make good units. Belkin makes pretty good ones. Um, there's a there's a ton of different options out there for people who want to have an excellent online experience on Xbox Live. Lastly, uh, and this is a last resort. You know, we all hate paying how much we do for internet as it is and don't want to have to pay more if we don't have to but you can always resort to upgrading your high-speed internet now usually unless you have below one megabit per second on the up upload or the download speed or both you're not going to have a problem uh, one megabit downloads a little slow uh, but uh, usually you can get by with around that speed uh, faster speeds are going to be better, especially if you have streaming going on in your home, if you have uh, other services, a lot of internet browsing, downloading, you're definitely going to want a faster speed because you're not going to get anywhere close to one megabit downloading or uploading if you're doing a lot of other stuff on your connection. Well, that about wraps up my uh, presentation on optimizing your internet for Xbox Live. Again, if you want written instructions, go to trialsandtribstech.blogspot.com and you can get the full rundown there.